I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, though, I'm not going to be in Leon. I am heading out to the capital of Managua. I'm going to be jumping in the car here in just like 30 minutes. I'm heading out, and just like we talked about on the show a few days ago, events around the country are myriad and exciting. Today I'm going to be going to a actual big event in the capital, but it's for a small private school. And much like in the United States where you get uh, community events that are like big things put on in theaters, and that's the kind of thing we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you a little bit of that, hopefully, and take you along with me and talk about going to events uh, and what they're like here in Nicaragua. Before I hop in the car and get underway, one of the things I've noticed about living here in Nicaragua is that the feeling of going out to say a theater show, music, a symphony, a play, anything like that, is that the feeling, now of course, remember, the population of Nicaragua is roughly the same population of a good sized city in the United States, a Houston, a Philadelphia, a Dallas, they're very equivalent in population. So when you're looking at things that are national or, or you know really large regions, you kind of have to put that into perspective of, okay, I'm gonna go to a big thing for this size city. Or if you're going to something that's more regional, like here in Leon, okay, I'm going to something that's for like a large suburb of one of those cities or a small city like a Utica, New York or a Binghamton or a Youngstown, Ohio. So when you put it in that perspective, it kind of helps you to understand what big public events are likely to be like. And one of the things that I use as a comparison is when I lived in, say, upstate New York or even in Dallas, Texas, sometimes I would go to community theaters. Um, just before we left, uh, my eldest daughter's best friend, Isabella, performed in a production of Annie. And uh, so we went and saw him in that, and it was, uh, you know, a lot of fun. It's a musical, and, you know, there's some professional actors, there's some kids who are just trying it out, and you get a mix of things. Community theater is a lot of fun. In fact, in many cases, I prefer community theater to, like, Broadway theater. Now, of course, partly that's because I really enjoy how cheap it is, but I also like going out and supporting people who aren't acting full-time. Of course, you know, the full-time professional actors, they make plenty of money. I don't need to support them, but they, I, I respect their craft, but it's nice to see local people doing that, to see it as a hobby and people putting in an effort and just go out and support people. I don't know, I, I like the way it feels. I right, have always liked community theater. Uh, I liked doing high school theater when I was in high school. And going out in Nicaragua, to me, really feels a lot like a good scale community theater type event. You get small crowds, you get small groups of actors. It feels like they're doing it as like a serious hobby. They're putting in a lot of effort, but it doesn't feel like this big overblown production. You don't have to, I don't know, it just has a different feel. It feels more visceral, more connected. And I think that's a better way to have theater. Nah, you can disagree, and it's easy to travel from here to places that have bigger theater options or bigger community event options. And in today's episode where I'm traveling, it is, I get to go to the Ruben Dario National Theater or the Teatro Nacional Ruben Dario, but uh, we're not going to see like some big national theater company. Sometimes you go do that, right? There's the, the National um, Ballet, which does the Ballet Folklorico, uh, the famous version of it. They do other things, of course, but that's the famous thing that they do. And it's fantastic. The artistry is amazing. But again, it's a city-sized uh, uh, ballet, not a national size or a state size, right? So it's it's uh, still has a little bit of a connected feeling. I, th I think it's still really cool. But they do tour internationally. They tour around the country here. You can go see them in like Europe uh, and things like that. So it, it's pretty cool. They're definitely very professional. But going to see like this, we get to use the National Theater, but we're just going to see a relatively large private school put on its end of year score, mid-year, I guess, uh, school performance. The school years here are completely different than they are in North America uh, from, a, from a timing perspective because the seasons are different. So they, they have different reasons to have school when they do. And uh, this is a kind of a class level recital. So it's not individual recitals, but it's it's classes putting on different events uh, like like singing and, and, and dance and stuff. And, and some of it is purely for fun. Some of it is educational. Some of it is, uh, uh, you know, folklore or cultural. But I, it, it, it's a fun event. I did it last year. I took my kids last year. My youngest wanted to go again this year. My eldest was kind of like, ah, it, it takes a lot for her to go out and want to go to the theater. So they, they decided not to come with me this year. But it is it's neat to get out and see these things. Things and, and I'm glad, I'm very glad that I get to be involved uh, in this. It's, it's great to be connected uh, to the country in this way. Uh, and, and these are the kinds of things that obviously this 
specific event you would need to know someone and have an invite to be able to go to because you have to be connected with the school but there's lots of smaller scale community things that do go on in the different towns or even in Managua and you can go out uh, and do them and I like going to the uh, the Teatro Gato the Gat, the Cat Theater which is at the Plaza Natura uh, in, on the uh, uh, Pisa Suburbana and uh, that they have a beautiful theater there air conditioned comfy seats and they do a great job uh, when I've been there the, the show's have been very, very good. Of course, they're in Spanish, uh, but those are really nice to get out to, and it gives a feeling of like a really high-end community theater where they're using a professional theater, but the the company is is maybe uh, community members who are just you know vying for the positions. I'm sure it's a professional theater. It's very nice. Uh, I recommend it. if you're going to be in the area and have the time, it's a neat thing to get out and see how that kind of stuff happens here in Nicaragua. It's been a little while since I've been to it. I hope to get to it again soon, but that's my feeling is it's like imagine community theater on steroids. And that is kind of how I feel about a lot of that stuff here in Nicaragua and a lot of countries that are this small in population. I think you're going to find it's exactly the same that it's, it's just, they don't have the resources to put, you know, they're not pulling actors from a pool of millions of people and they're not, you know, able to pay them huge amounts of money and they're, they're not able to not do other things. Uh, and so you, you just naturally have this more American community theater feel about things. Um, but it makes it so much more feel like it's a community event to go out. You're not going in a pool of people from traveled from all over the country to go see this one performance on Broadway. It's people who've come from around the city to see a city performance of something. So I like that a lot, but Let's head out to the Teatro Ruben Dario and uh, see how the event goes from here. Something that you'll notice really quickly when you're doing anything with Nicaragua is that there aren't the standard or the common copyright concerns that you deal with in North America. And so in events like this, uh, you have nearly everything is performed using copyrighted music. Even if it's the students performing it, they're going to perform something that's copyrighted. And if they are uh, doing a dance recital or anything, then they're going to use just straight up the, the regular music as is copyrighted uh, by the artist. And so, unfortunately, none of the audio, absolutely none, uh, except for the one Beethoven uh, piece, are we able to use from these recordings at all. So I'm able to get the video for you, uh, but I have to provide my own music and talk over it, um, unfortunately. But this is uh, gives you an idea. You can imagine some of the songs that are being used here include uh, Chubby Checkers, Let's Twist Again, like we did last summer, and a lot of like major pop hits. Uh, it's popular for the kids, because this is a show really for the parents, right? This is uh, classes or groups of classes get together, and the younger kids are really really just out to have fun. It's kind of a, a team building exercise and a chance to just show off uh, for their parents and get on stage. And, and it, it, that's a big deal, right? For uh, young kids to be able to get onto, I mean, this is the national theater. So it's very, very neat uh, to be able to do that. But as always, I like being able to get out and do things that are a hundred percent non-touristy. I am, I've done this multiple times and by no small amount, I am the only foreigner I am sure in the entire place and uh, people are a little bit amazed that I'm there but it's a fun event uh, we've done it before my kids even want to go it's just a long trip and everything makes it a little bit tough but I wish I could share more of it with you but it was definitely a fun outing and as always, the Ruben Dario National Theater is gorgeous. It is a beautiful venue, very comfortable. There's so much air conditioning. It's You're actually a little bit cold in the theater. I'm glad I was able to record what I was able to get, but uh, YouTube really does limit our ability to use it, unfortunately. So we're only really able to show a little bit of the of the event at the theater uh, this evening, but it was it was fun. We had a good time. I'm glad I went, and uh, I'm sure I'll be going again. Afterwards, uh, we went and just got dinner at uh, Parque Salvador Allende, which is the uh, waterfront there in Managua. It's a little bit expensive. You got to pay like two dollars for parking, roughly, and then the restaurants are a lot more expensive there than other places. But it's often used as a special night out kind of place. It's popular for for bigger events, but the 
Cost is really high. So the number of Monoguans that are actually going out there remains pretty low, even though it's a super popular, like really beautiful, really well done, has a lot to offer. But um, I don't know how they're going to really deal with the, the prices. And it's not really meant for tourists. Of course, as a tourist, you're absolutely welcome to go. But it's not designed around tourists. Some always go because it's downtown Managua. There's only so many things to do in Managua. But it is a little bit of an odd place if you're a tourist to go hang out. I do recommend it, of course, if you're a tourist and you're in Managua and you're wondering what are the things to do in Managua, yeah, Salvador Allende is a good location. And of course, you need to see the Plaza Nicaragua, which is right next to it. And if you're there, you can see, at least from the outside, uh, the uh, National Teatro Ruben Dario and, and the stretch of of uh, Boulevard Simon Bolivar, which is right there. And, and it's, it's just a very central location to a lot of the big stuff in downtown Managua. Now, of course, not many people are going to Managua as a tourist. It's just not a great tourist city. It doesn't have the big things, the show-stopping sites to go see. But if you are going to be there, and it is a nice city, it's a nice, it's a livable city, just not a tourist city, uh, then, then this area you're probably going to want to see. And that waterfront is very nice. And during the day, there's actually a pleasure boat that goes out to an island that I know nothing about. I really need to take it. That would be a really cool, interesting thing for the show. Uh, but at night, it's really dark. I didn't have a low light camera with me. Um, I was not going to carry the Fuji around to go out to dinner. So I didn't get shots of Salvador Allende. But I will go out there sometime during the day and film all that for you guys so you can see that. I want to go do the similar one. The Mal It's a Malecon. I want to go get the Malecon at San Jorge. That's supposed to be really nice as well. I've seen it from a distance. and It looks amazing. So I want to go check it out anyway. So that was our day uh, going out in Managua. I love getting to do this stuff, right? It, it's very meaningful for me not just the individual events, because I knew kids in the show, right? That's why I was there. And uh, so so it's important to go and support them, and I want to be there for them. But it's also, it means a lot to me, just uh, the, the fact that we're uh, asked to be in and invited to be a part of, like, real Nicaraguan culture. This isn't like a, oh, here's an event that tourists like, and, and please come and join that, which, of course, we get those. That's like going out in the square in Leon, like, oh, there's a big thing, and it's half for the locals and half to show the tourists the culture or whatever. But this was completely, this is for Nicaraguan families and being being invited in and, and part of the community uh, is a really big deal. So we had a good time with that. All right. So I, I, because this is kind of a short topic, I also want to show I did an interview um, about two weeks ago uh, on the public bus. It wasn't exactly about the public buses, but it was about uh, safety and living here in Leon, Nicaragua. Uh, and we rode the public bus while doing it. So I want to show that the recording's not the best. Uh, they did it as a live interview. So I was carrying the GoPro for what little bit I can. So I'm going to show you a little bit of it. Uh, and I'll link, uh, I think, right here, the um, the uh, direct uh, uh no, I can't. It'll be in the show notes because it was on Facebook. It's not on YouTube. The original video, uh, so you can see the whole thing as it was live streamed here in Nicaragua. Uh, but give you a little bit of a feel. This is really cool that I got to do an interview. This is a, a pretty popular channel uh, on Facebook that I was on. Um, so a bit different from when I do uh, TV spots or whatever. And I didn't have uh, my producer there with me on this one. So I was just on my own. We didn't have, uh, they had a camera crew, but it was all very much like we're just in the street. And we're jumping into a bus and doing it live on the bus. Uh, and uh, it was very cool. <laughs> ok, y nos encontramos hoy desde León, capital de la revolución. Estamos hablando acá con un bloguero. Tenemos al ciudadano norteamericano Scott Miller. Scott, is there? Yes. Scott Miller, los invito para que vean su canal. Estamos ahorita en el mercadito de Sutiado con todos nuestros amigos caponeros. Y hacer una imagen ahí donde ellos, con todos nuestros amigos caponeros que nos están acá acompañando. Y nos vamos a subir en una de las rutas del bus. Vámonos, pues. Right. Vamos a hablar un poco de Nicaragua, la ciudad más segura de Centroamérica. Así que. Vamos a montarnos en el bus con Scott Miller. Estamos aquí platicando con Scott Miller, el bloguero norteamericano, él hace videos para promover que la gente del resto del mundo venga a Nicaragua, visite Nicaragua, los turistas, y podamos hablar un poquito con Scott. Hi Scott, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Fine, fine, fine. I need to talk about you uh, because uh, I need, uh, I have three questions, simple questions. Okay. Eh? Uh, all the time when I talk with the tourist people, uh, strange people, I say uh, something that, that I like it. Nicaragua is the most safe country around Central America. Yeah. And Leon 
-hmm. is the most safe city around Nicaragua. What do you think about this? It's really noticeable. You know, one of the reasons that we chose Nicaragua when we when we moved here three years ago was we have kids and, and living in Tomorrow, yes, you have three years. To Tomorrow be... is three years since the day we moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. permanently. Oh, yeah. Yes, and uh, you know that Nicaragua is so safe that you can travel anywhere in the country, that you can live anywhere in the country, and be really confident in how safe it is is a really big deal for us. Um, and Leon, we got lucky that it happened. We didn't choose it because it was safe, but Leon is is really is incredible. Yeah. Being able to walk the streets, even at night, like I never fear. I go out into the small towns, the barrios, I walk anywhere in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have to worry about anything. And I don't just worry about, uh, or don't have to worry about like safety. I, don't, I carry a camera and I vlog and I'm, I'm alone a lot of the time. And uh, it's no worries at all. If you can see right now, all of the people that in the bus, for example, uh, the young man with the cell phone in the, mm -hmm. in the hand, uh, with a bag, uh, with a school bag, and nobody's fear, nobody fear, because all the people knows that it is the safe. It take yeah. the bus and go on. It's, it's the safe. Okay. Second question. Second question. Let me because uh, I'm nervous. And I, I forget the second question, but I know. Okay. If you are you are this, you decide with your family to live in Nicaragua, to live in Leon. Uh, what do you think about uh, how is living in Leon? Is cheap? or is expensive for a, for a tourist people or for American people, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for Americans, it is very affordable. Um, it's so affordable that it really, it's a life-changing uh, move to, to, to live in a place that's so much less uh, everything, public transportation, going out to eat, uh, rent, uh, if you're gonna buy a house, like go all those party, things. Go oh, go to a party, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing that um, in America, it's so difficult to go out to dinner, to go see a, a band play at a bar. It's so expensive, like a beer could be $10. Oh. And here, going out is so, everyone goes out because it's so affordable. It's, it's not that much more than eating on the street or eating at home or... Okay, tell me, mm -hmm. who, uh, what is the difference? Okay, if you were, if you were going to, to go to the party in another country, mm -hmm. how do you think is, is, is the cost? Um, so if and I, I, and I, I, I want to go to dance, to drink some beer, I don't know. Right, if I'm going out in the US, I'm easily going to spend several hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars? Several. Two, three hundred dollars to go out. If I'm gonna have beers, I'll have some food. You know, I'll take someone. Um, here, I could go out for ten dollars yep. for a whole night out. Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. It's so different. Two, three beers, right. four beers, dance. I don't know. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, okay. and, and a little bit of food as well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, Paul, uh, Scott, Scott. Uh, okay, I need to know uh, for finish this a little interview. Um, I need to know. Okay. All the time, I am checking the Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. All the people around the world that don't live in Nicaragua believe oh, Nicaragua is dangerous. In Nicaragua, the government is killing the people. Oh, don't don't go to Nicaragua. What do you What do you want to say to the these people that don't don't know Nicaragua, don't know the reality of Nicaragua? What do you want to, to say to these people? Ah, uh, you know. To those people who get, because everyone gets this, right? If you live outside Nicaragua, the stories are so ridiculous. And I think that coming here, like the thing that I tell people all the time is they need to actually, if you think that's what it's like, you need to get on a plane and come here because you will, it will change your opinion of what world news is. Because it's so obviously so safe and it takes so little time to see firsthand, especially if you live here, like you, you give a little bit of time and like and like deal with things, like get internet, drive around the roads, go go out walking in public, go to a sporting game, yeah, but right? The, like the, the baseball, the, and and what you see really quickly is that the government is uh, providing for people, is protecting. Healthcare is free. Americans get better free healthcare in Nicaragua than they do in the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, it's that's... it's insane how, and that. I think that a lot of the countries in the north, especially, fear an exposure of Nicaragua because so much is done for the people on so few resources. Because people, I know Americans come here and like they see the new baseball stadium, right? Beautiful new baseball stadium and beautiful new hospital here in Leon. Yeah, the most, the most big hospital 
in Nicaragua in the first mm -hmm. most big hospital in Central America. In yes. Leon, in Leon. Yes, the biggest soon, hospital complex soon. in yeah, all of Central soon. America, right here. And Americans say, how is this even possible that tax base doesn't seem large enough to be able to provide this much yeah, for the it, people? All, it's, it's not only the hospital, uh, it's not only the baseball stadium. You can see in the in the, in the street. You can see in the in the, in the road. You can see in the park. You can yes. see it, it, it is, it's development. It's development. It is not a politician. It's development. Right. Real development. Right. Development yeah. that people really yeah. use. I, I I I all the time. I am. I don't know. It's 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 ridiculous because uh, so many people. All right, we're out today. We're riding the buses. I showed a little bit of this the other day. But we're taking an opportunity to actually uh, do a trip on the public buses here. I'm here with Camillo, and we are riding around the city. We uh, we caught the bus in Marketino in Sutiava. We're actually riding the bus right now, so it's really bumpy. And uh, we're heading downtown to the Central Square, to the Central Market, and uh, the plaza at the Cathedral, or the Basilica, as I always call it, because it is a basilica. But uh, this is, right now, yeah, we're just about to get off, and uh, it's... We just wanted to show how nice and easy it is to ride the buses here. It's uh, I believe six cord to go across town. Very very cheap. That's sixteen cents in the U.S. We're gonna show a little bit as we get off. All right, we're right downtown. We're gonna walk the last block over to the park. But the buses here are really fantastic. If you're coming from the United States, especially a little bit less if you're coming from Canada, the idea of using public transportation to actually get around the city and do things is something we're just not used to. We never do that. It's expensive, it's inconvenient, often it's unsafe. And here in Nicaragua, one of the, the great things is that public transportation is ubiquitous. It's very affordable. Real people use it as part of normal commuting. It's, it's everyday life for everybody. You don't have to you know, be in a very specific situation or need to go to really specific places to be able to use public transportation. And so it's, it's a really just a very different experience. And it's not just getting around the city. That's actually what we do less, especially as tourists, you're less likely to hop a municipal bus and, and zip around the city. But we wanted to show these municipal buses specifically because so much of my audience has been interested in what the, <laughs> the municipal buses are like because there's so many new and it's in the news even in the US that Nicaragua has this huge uh, investment in busing around the city but uh, we're less likely as tourists to actually use that it's just not a type of thing that we're you, you know you're much more likely to catch a cab or do some walking because you're a tourist but if you are uh traveling between cities the interlocales or the chicken buses two different things uh are much more likely to be something you're going to engage with so you'll see a lot of tourist information about those things plus it's very interesting to take them because it's something just very different. It's very Central American, very Nicaraguan. So I encourage that a lot. Like they're very easy to do. They're very cost effective. It's a great way to get around the country. But here with the municipal buses, you have a really good opportunity to get around the city and go around to different neighborhoods very cheaply. It's easy to ride around, just hop off wherever. And Leon especially, but all over Nicaragua, the cities are very walkable, except for Managua, which I always say, that's very difficult to navigate. But all the other cities are walkable in size. All of them, including Managua, very safe. It's not a problem to get out and walk around. We're about to go into a pedestrian way here, by the way. Uh, and so using public buses and going around the city, just exploring is a real option. And it's a good way to actually kind of just experience what normal people are going to do on a regular basis, because it's how people get around. So I'm gonna take a, a second here and turn you around. This is a beautiful walkway uh, coming into the Central Park. So I didn't wanna do any audio while we were walking, but I love these pedestrian ways. They're uh, mostly memorials. They have a lot of places to sit, beautiful tree-lined, parks. It's a great place to have like restaurants and stuff and new ones are popping up. These are actually not that old. They've all gone in in the last few years, uh, but it makes the walking area around the Central Park really pleasant and it's very easy to get in and out. I'm really hopeful that the city expands the pedestrian ways and makes more of the city non-driving. I know that's a big challenge, but this is a colonial city and finding alternative ways to navigate the city 
is a spot where it could be of really large benefit to the city as a whole. This is a spot where being a colonial city, having narrow streets, uh, they could potentially take a different approach and say, we're just going to not have cars or not have public cars, only like taxis or buses, uh, and really make it something special. It's an opportunity. So here we are. Let's head into Central Park. All right, we're walking through Central Park. It is late morning. Other than the birds hitting you in the head, it is a beautiful, very tranquilo time to be hanging out down here. Not uh, not too many people. I mean, there's always a lot of people in Central Park, right? Never goes away, but it's mostly the vendors. This time of day, kids are in school. People are at work. Though the tourists are still napping or sleeping off their hangovers. And uh, man, the birds get aggressive out here but it's a, uh, it's a gorgeous day, a little bit on the warm side, but we've got some cloud cover. So it's nice to be out and wandering around doing the, the bus ride and everything. This is pretty cool. It is Thursday as I'm recording this. I'm getting ready to do my live stream in a few hours. Always a busy day, but we wanted to get out and show the buses and we, we rode them the other day, but I really want to encourage people. I'm a big believer in public transportation in general. And here in Nicaragua, it's just so good that you know, as, as, a, as a tourist, it's a good opportunity, obviously, to make your, your travels more affordable. But I think as a cultural experience, it's very important, especially for North Americans who do public transportation so seldom that doing this and experiencing just how safe and easy it is, is, is really is an important aspect of, of life here in Nicaragua. So I also want to point out, so I'm in the, oh, I'm going to struggle with this, northeast corner of Central Park here, and there's a lot of new work that has been done here. Now, when we first moved here a number of years ago, a lot of things have been done since then. But in the last few, I don't know, months, I guess, the street behind me is a new, it's been a pedestrian way, but it did not have the uh, kind of Hall of Heroes or the, the Heroes and Martyrs display like it has now. So it's pretty neat to see that happening. That is brand new. And then here along the cathedral, which is the Basilica Cathedral. People ask me about this. It is a basilica whose name is the cathedral. So it's very confusing. Is it a cathedral? Well, technically basilicas are cathedrals, but that's not what they really mean. It is a basilica if you're going to describe it. So it's a basilica, but what do they call it? They call it the cathedral. Very confusing. But this street along the side of it, that is the cathedral right there. The street along it did not have trees not that long ago. This is a very new uh, addition there as well. So it's just this area around the park, which is a very pretty area. Lots and lots of tourists come here. Um, and this was was a pedestrian way previously, but now it is uh, just a little bit more uh, beautiful and tranquilo. It used to just be wide open. This is way better having the trees and everything. So this is uh, this is very cool. And so many birds and hats out here. If you're never familiar with Raspados, and I never show these on the show because it's, it's not something I do that much. I tend, being North American, I tend to eat ice cream. But a lot more common here is eating Raspados, which is basically a combination of a fruit jam or something similar, sweetened milk with shaved ice. Because dairy is very difficult to come by here, and when you do get dairy, it has a tendency to be a low cream uh, percentage because of the hot weather. Nicaragua, this is something that Nicaragua lacks, is a cold mountain climate with a large-scale cattle industry in the mountains. There just isn't enough terrain for that. And so the majority of cattle here is raised at hotter temperatures at lower altitude. And while that's great for steak production, if you're looking at beef cattle, Nicaragua has that in spades. But if you're looking for dairy cattle, where you're going to be producing uh, milk and especially cream can be very difficult. Producing milk can be done, and there is milk production in the country. Cream production is almost non-existent. So if you're going to be dealing with uh, something where you want to make like ice cream or something of the sort, that's generally going to be imported. So ice cream here is a very different thing uh, and much less common, whereas Raspatos with made from ice instead of dairy uh, is, is very popular and more traditional. So we're out doing this. We're gonna get a little bit of, so you can see it being made. Combinado de leche. No, de leche, de leche. 
Gracias. <laughs> At least I didn't get on my shirt. So this is sweetened condensed milk and then shaved ice underneath. So it's very cold, very refreshing, and it's quite sweet, but it's very different than anything you'll get in North America. I've never had shaved, like, we have shaved ice, but it's not like this. Um, North American shaved ice is a, is a different animal completely. All right, vlog fam, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad you guys were able to come along. I apologize or uh, thank you for watching this completely different style video that we're doing today. It was uh, it was really nice being able to go out with Camilo and do some uh, completely different footage. And, and thanks to him for doing the interview, uh, which was up on live streaming on Facebook. Uh, I will link that in the description. And thank you to Marcella, who took me out to uh, uh, the Teatro Ruben Dario. Uh, for that really special show and uh, thanks to all of you for watching and joining us as always like subscribe uh, if you have any questions just go down in the description and or down to where the description is there's the comment section ask your questions in the description is information on how you could send in a video question and actually get yourself on the show and help us make this more interesting content and of course and answer your question specifically which is also a benefit and uh as always if you'd like to support the channel and help out with the work that we do here uh, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller that uh, comes directly to me and helps pay for all the stuff that we do, whether it's the cameras, or the microphones, or the computers, or this amazing studio that we have. Actually, I'm gonna turn around and show you just real quickly. This is where we shot the live stream the other night, so you can see the, uh, <clears throat> the wall there. This is where we are. And uh, it's just, it's, been, it's, it's so much fun making this show, and I'm so glad that we get to do this. And uh, if you would be so kind as to post on social media, Tell your friends, family about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And you're going to pop up four videos on the screen. Go ahead and click on one of them. That's your instructions. Go ahead. Just do it. Don't ask. Do it. Click on one, but you, you can pick. You get to pick which one, but you, you have to follow the instructions and choose one.